How big is the world of Naruto? That statement right there is not something that I thought I would be saying ever. When thinking about planetary composition and how it would vastly differ from Earth, the first thing that would come to most people's minds would be One Piece. I did a video in the past going over the interplanetary composition of One Piece and how it's very, very different from our own Earth. However, in Naruto, it's not so much as in our face like it is in One Piece. The planet just kind of seems to be the same. Today, I'm here with you guys to discuss why the Naruto planet might be just a little bit different. For starters, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about the Shinobi and the Naruto world. From the very first episode of Naruto, the Shinobi is highlighted as someone with incredible physical and mental capabilities. The average Shinobi is very gifted and is capable of summoning all of the elements through supernatural means. Even during the very beginning of Naruto and the Chunin exam, Shinobis are constantly being compared to the speed of sound. Multiple members of Orochimaru's sound village actually do use sound as part of their attacks. In the cases of weaker Shinobi, such as young Naruto, we saw him being able to take out full-grown adults when he was a kid just because he was a shinobi and he was much more gifted with chakra you might be thinking to yourself right now dc why are you talking about the shinobi obviously they're very physically gifted that was just a given from the very beginning while yes that is very true obviously shinobi were very gifted we kind of have to put a little bit of a quantification on how fast they actually are at a low ball to continue this a little bit traditional means of travel that we have today would be things such as cars trains airplanes and other things that are like that as we know, Naruto takes place in a time frame that is very, very different from ours today. Well, it does have things like TV, which would kind of allude to it being a modern time. It doesn't really have anything advanced in terms of communication or transportation. Later in Taborto, we do see that the train becomes a thing like the Thunder Rail, and yet Shinobi still opt to move rather than take the train themselves. Now, I'm not going to go as far and say that Shinobi on average are faster than trains themselves and their movement speed, because I think that that's a little bit harder to get to. However, we do know that Shinobi must be much faster than the traditional animals that are used for long distance transportation. The village hidden in the sand would use things like camels, and the village hidden in the leaf, and most of the other villages would use things like horses. I think that it's very safe to say that teams like Team 7 and Team Guy would be fast enough to be at least the speed of horses when traveling over long distances. During the Kazakage retrieval arc, when they were going to find Gara and save Gara from the Akatsuki, we do know that it took them three days to get to the sand village. Tsunade also makes a statement that it would take them three days to be able to get back. When Team 7 was given this information about the Kaze Kage, they went immediately to the village. Even when we see other ninja go on missions, we don't see the traditional methods that are taken for preparation when going on long-distance journeys. They don't start packing food, they don't start packing water, they aren't bringing up tents, and we're not seeing them take any traditional stops. We also need to think about the strenuous nature that is being put on Naruto's mind as he knows that Gara is in trouble. When meeting with Tamari in the forest, we can see how much emotion Naruto is putting into the fact that Gara is not safe, as well as he even starts crying thinking about that fact. Even when analyzing Naruto's character, it doesn't really make any sense for him to want to stop if he's so upset that Gara is in potential danger. Naruto has set up such a dichotomy with himself and aversion that he doesn't know when to stop. Naruto will go until his body has physically nothing left in him, and we've seen him fight in wars for days. Given all that, I think it's safe to say that the shinobi would be moving at the speed of a horse, as well as they probably wouldn't need to take any breaks when moving on this three-day journey. Now we can get on to why I've been mentioning all of these things, and why I've been justifying my case for the shinobi's speed. In the Kazekage rescue mission arc, we get the statement that the distance between Konoha and Suna would take around three days to travel. This is stated one time by Kakashi, this is backed up one time by Tsunade, and in an anime canon episode of Borto, it is stated by Konkuro that at the shinobi's current speed, they would be able to reach the leaf in around three days because it is anime canon some of you will dismiss that which is absolutely fine because there is still those two other statements when we are solving for a variable of distance we need two things we need the speed at which the thing is traveling as well as the time that it traveled for as i've already stated we have the time that it traveled for which is three days and now we need the speed which i was mentioning before as a horse the Akalteke horse has been coined the golden animal because of its ability and longevity and endurance when traveling over long distances these horses can run up to 35 miles per hour on a consistent sprint, which is very, very fast, as it translates to around 15 meters per second. Might I add you that these horses are running at 15 meters per second, and the highest clock speed for Usain Bolt is around 12.2 meters per second, as his average sprint time was around 10 meters per second. Basically, what we are saying here is that the Shinobi are as fast as a horse, and a little bit faster than Usain Bolt. While it is contentious if the Hidden novels are canon, it is stated in the Gara Hidden novel that Shinobi are capable of running thousands of miles without taking a break, as well as they are fast as horses and tenacious as camels. If you do not want to use this statement from the novel as a prime source of evidence, that is perfectly fine. I'm pretty sure that I've justified my case of why Shinobi would be as fast as they are. Now that we have our speed and we have our time that it took, we can solve for our distance. 
Plugging in at 35 miles an hour or 56 kilometers per hour, multiplied by the 72 hours that it would take to travel, we get our distance of 4,069 kilometers. Throughout the duration of Naruto, we've seen very few maps, but the cartography work that we have seen is absolutely beautiful as it perfectly represents the land that is around them. When given a description of the physical layout of the battlefield, we get to see the distance between Konoha and Suna on a map. On this very same map that is shown, we get to see a little peek out of the land where the enemy hideout is shown during the war arc. Taking the distance between Konoha and Suna, which is 4,069 kilometers, and dividing it by our 207 pixels, which is the distance that is between them and shown, we get around 19 kilometers per pixel. Multiplying that by the 92 pixels, which the hideout represents, we get to around 1,808 kilometers as the total diameter of the hideout's area. Big spot of mass deformation is going to be very useful because it's a prime indicator which allows us to see things on a grander scale and will kind of pop out to us in our eyes. Now that we have that, we can move on to our next section, which is in Naruto the Last. In the last movie, the shinobi on the ground are looking up at Naruto and his group that are up on the moon as well, so that means that they're on the same side as the Earth. We also do know that the governments are getting ready to actually destroy the moon with the hundred shinobi that are powering the cannon. For this whole plan to work out, they must be on the same side that the moon is showing. Shot right here, you can see this little part that I highlighted with the pixel values right here. That is actually the hideout that we've seen before. Now, you might be wondering yourself, why is that? Well, let's look around it a little bit. Straight to the bottom left, we can see that there is that whole area of the orangish yellow, which represents the sand. And that is very obvious. That is a complete miscolor from everything else that is there. That has to be the sand village. If you look at the composition around it, there's two bodies of water that are in between it. If you notice on the map before, there's also two bodies of water that's surrounded on both sides. It was a mass of land in the middle, there was water, and then there's land on the left side. There's also water on the right side, and then land on the right side. It is completely matching up 100% to what the composition is there. All of that coupled with the fact that it's on the exact same side that it was before, we can 100% guarantee that that right there is the area that we need to size. The enemy hideout, which is 1,808 kilometers, is represented by 29 pixels on this scan. Once we divide the distance by its pixel value, we get around 62 kilometers per pixel. Applying that by the whole diameter of the Earth, we get to see that the Naruto planet is around 82,000 kilometers in diameter. To put that into relative perspective to you, that means that it's just a little bit over half the size of Jupiter and six times the size of our Earth. Wow, that is absolutely insane. I am not going to lie to you. I had absolutely no idea that the Naruto planet would be this big. That is absolutely crazy that it is six times the size of Earth. Now, the One Piece planet didn't really have that many indicators of it being that much bigger either, other than the fact that it was just very compositionally different. Thinking back on it though, and as we start to analyze from this perspective, we kind of start to see how it can be that much bigger as the cloud and the rain and the sand are all so far away from each other, but are still represented on one single small section of the planet. Let's go a little bit deeper into the specifics of what this would actually mean. The total circumference of the Earth, which means the total distance around it entirely, not just its diameter, is around 40,000 kilometers, whereas the circumference of this planet is over 250,000 kilometers. And now here comes the fun part that everybody has been waiting for. How much energy would it take to destroy the Naruto planet? For us to answer this question, we need to get into gravitational binding energy. The gravitational binding energy of a celestial object is the amount of energy that you need to produce to overcome a gravitationally bound state. Planets and celestial objects as a whole have the tendency to pull themselves back together because of the gravity that is created at their center. You cannot destroy, fragment, violently fragment, pulverize, vaporize any celestial object without overcoming its gravitational binding energy. Without getting into too much speculation, we can still use 1G of microgravity, which is just represented by the gravitational constant on Earth. Plugging in for planetary parameters, we get this large number right here, which is our mass of the planet. And then plugging in for our gravitational binding energy formula, we see that it would take large planet levels of energy to be able to destroy the Naruto planet. In specific, 5.9 times 10 to the 34th joules. What an absolutely crazy thought it is that the Naruto planet could be this big and it could take that much energy to have to destroy it. In the end, I had so much fun making this video and I'm very excited about the results that I did get. Thank you all so much for watching. I really hope I can continue to be your power scaling guy in the future.